thank you, President uh, Zorabishvili. Uh, welcome uh, to Estonia, and thank you for being with us. Uh, you've been here as uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, now as a president. Uh, um, I, I think it's 15 years ago exactly. when, it, when it was. So um, I'm, I'm quite sure that our relations between our two countries have considerably developed meanwhile because Georgia has a special place in every Estonian's heart, and, uh, and also me, I am not an exception. And you know how to make people welcome also in your country. I'm not, uh, not at all astonished that the number of tourists uh, is, is rising, uh, is rising uh, very quickly, because uh, I still remember in Kutaisi in 2017 when there was your traditional male choir singing Estonian national anthem. This is hard to outdo as a welcome. So I hope we can be as, uh, as, as friendly towards you here in uh, Tallinn uh, as well. Uh, the relations between our countries are, are steady and, and, uh, and it's important that one of your first visits in this function comes here in Estonia. And uh, it's, a, it's a working visit. We make you work very hard. You're here to speak at the Lennart Meri uh, Security Conference, uh, which is one of the biggest regional, uh, regional security uh, conferences uh, where we try to gather people who are like-minded but have different uh, experiences with, uh, with security. So um, you are very welcome also. During uh, the meeting, we discussed uh, our bilateral issues and uh, we found them to be uh, in good condition. Defense, education, economy, development aid. We also discussed EU integration and, uh, and uh, development of the civil society. Estonia has numerous projects ongoing uh, uh, in Georgia and with Georgia to help you on this uh, difficult way of uh, development. We discussed the situation in the region and uh, Georgia's aspirations toward, uh, towards NATO and the EU. As, uh, as everybody here knows, Estonia stands firmly side by side with Georgia, supporting your path to both of these organizations. Georgia belongs there. Georgia deserves it. And Georgia needs to be involved in the EU enlargement debates. Sooner or later this will happen. I am assured if you continue in developing uh, your country both economically and also as a rule of law state. Like Estonia, Georgia is not only a security consumer but also a provider. We and our partners and allies in NATO, we all appreciate uh, your significant contribution to international missions, and not even only to NATO mission, uh, where you are the biggest contributor to the uh, resolute support mission per capita, but you are also in the EU missions. So um, we are very grateful that you are trying to also to contribute to international security the way you can. I would wish Georgia all the, all the luck in uh, continuing with important reforms. We discussed some of the most difficult ones and I'm quite sure that uh, Georgian people have a lot of ambition to be successful also in these next uh, stages uh, of reforms. We know they are not easy to do, uh, but uh, they are necessary to make Georgia a much better and more prosperous place where you have been in the past. And uh, here in Estonia, having passed all these difficult stages of reform ourselves, we can appreciate it and we can sense it uh, maybe better than uh, some um, other people globally can appreciate and sense the difficulties of, uh, of the reform. But compared to you, we had things easier in this sense, but we did not have an evil line breaking our country into parts. And you have to do all this despite the fact that Georgia remains partially occupied. Estonia will always support the territorial integrity of Georgia. We will never forget to mention this issue of the evil line wherever we move, wherever we go, among partners, allies, and people who are not so friendly to us. It always comes up, and I can promise you that it will keep coming up. We stand by Georgia, and we hope all the best for your country. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. President, for this very warm welcome, but a welcome that I expected because I know uh, the level, the warmth, the closeness of our relation that uh, is based uh, on a common uh, past that we rather forget, by the way, but, uh, but it has forged some uh, links and some similar experiences that uh, means that we do not have to explain certain things uh, to each other. Uh, we are following the same path also to the same future. I very much not only hope so, but I'm convinced so, uh, that we'll get where you are 
and will be again in the same family. Uh, meanwhile, we have to go down that, uh, that path, and as you mentioned, uh, we uh, are going down that path with uh, some additional uh, difficulties, to say the least, and that is the occupation of our territories, the occupying line, uh, the pressure and the aggression that we feel, or the provocations that we feel almost uh, every day. Uh, and as you mentioned, that uh, uh, aggravates the difficulty of, of moving down that path. But at the same time, uh, that is our victory that we have managed over the past 15 years, since I was here last time, to really move steadily, uh, step after step, uh, towards our ambition of uh, integrating EU and, uh, and NATO. Uh, we've gone from neighborhood to partnership, from partnership to association, to free trade, to visa liberalization. We've had, we have now in our constitution both ambitions inscribed, uh, integrate EU and NATO, and all of that, and our internal development, economic and democratic, has happened despite Russia's evil line. I like that occupation line, uh, and if Russia's intention was to prevent us, to block us down that road, it has not succeeded. So it's um, our victory and their defeat. It's our common victory because it's also the victory of all the countries that have supported us, that are supporting us now in all uh, forms. First of all, as you mentioned, in not forgetting what has happened uh, in terms of occupation of our territory and is happening, one conflict cannot make the other one forgotten because that would be a success for Russia and that's not a success that we are going to give Russia. So for that, again, uh, we are very thankful to you and to all the countries that not only do not forget but remind Russia every day of the fact that it's violating its commitment and that it's not respecting the international principles of international law and of the neighborhood that it should. Uh, we are also uh, moving towards uh, EU and NATO. There are the uh, today's uh, conditions that exist in both organizations, uh, but the door is open. It has been repeated in uh, Tbilisi uh, by the Secretary General of NATO, and it is repeated uh, by uh, uh, the uh, EU leaders as well, uh, Mr. Juncker recently. So we see the perspective, we're moving to that perspective, and we know that we can, if not open the final door, we are opening all the possible doors meanwhile. And there too, we are very much supported by the friends that we have within the European Union and your country is one of the most reliable uh, friend. And that means everyday cooperation in all the fields in this last stage of the reforms that we have to go through, uh, which is the difficult part as always when you get uh, almost to the end, that's where you are deepening. Uh, and we are doing that because we can count uh, on the uh, economic, on the development cooperation, on the cooperation in many very specific fields, whether it's education, whether it's uh, e-government, uh, whether it's in uh, economy tourism. Uh, we have opened direct flights with, uh, with Estonia. And th that's also a very physical, concrete sign uh, of the closeness that we have between the two countries. Uh, and we have to continue uh, to also physically make uh, Georgia ever closer to European Union physically. Black Sea has to become again a sea of connection, connectivity, transport, closeness between peoples and a place where safety will be enhanced and cooperation will be enhanced. Thank you very much, Mrs. President.